Hello, and welcome back to what is part 7 of how to create an endless runner using Unity and C Sharp. Um, today we're just going to be fixing up a bit of the player movement and adding a double jump. Um, so let's just get started. We need to start by just going to our player script. And to begin with, we're just going to fix up the player movement a little bit. Um, so to begin with, we want to change the power from being an int to being a float. Just so we have a little bit more control over it, because that just allows us to have a decimal place. And then we want to come down to where we're using our power. And we're just going to delete that line. Um, instead of using a rigid well, instead of using a rigid body like we were and adding force in the fixed update, we're going to just use a transform um, at the bottom of the normal update. So we'll just add transform dot translate vector 2 whoops vector 2 in the direction of right and we want to do this by our power and seeing we're not in the fixed update we want to do it by time but delta time and this will just replace what we had. Um, so, in the reason why we're taking down the fixed update is because the fixed update is really good for, well, is designed for using uh, rigid bodies and anything where you're moving around things that have physics. Um, the transform.translate moves things a little bit differently. It's not based off physics, so we don't need to have it in there. But we wanted to add this so it wouldn't run at different speeds on different computers. Um, fix update, like I mentioned in a previous episode, only runs at certain times. Um, it runs at point zero, I mean zero point zero zero two of a second, and the physics runs just before it. So having anything to do with the physics instead of here just makes all that run a lot nicer. Um, so yeah, now that we have that, we can just save this and wait for that to load. And then have a look at what we've done. Um, to begin with, the game's going to be really, really fast now because we were using add force, which needs a lot bigger numbers, but now we're using uh, translate, which needs small trans yeah translate, which needs a lot smaller numbers. So the game's going to move really quickly, um, which isn't happening, which is a little bit weird. So let's just come over, and that's because okay, so. I just filmed this video again because I screwed up on the first one. Before this was set to 100 and I just set it down to 3.5. So that's why the game's working at normal speed. For you it will be going a little bit faster, but if you just change it to 3.5 it will be fine. So now that we have that, um, I'll just show you that again. So yeah, now you move at a constant rate. And it makes your jump a lot more reliable, but still can't double jump, so we'll add that. Um, if we come down into our game, to add the double jump, we're going to need to add a few more variables, which are just going to be pools. So we're just going to need three private pools, which are going to be can. Double jump. Got another one, which is going to be jump one. And then another one, which is going to be our jump two. Um, so to begin with, we want all of these to be set to false. So we'll just do that quickly. Jump one equals false. Jump two equals false. And can double jump equals false. Cool. So now that we have all that, we can come back down to where we were working before. I'll just bring it up a little bit. And down here, 
we are going to want to change around the structure of this. So currently we're just using a get key and get key is called for as long as you have the button down but um, because we're doing a double jump we want you to be able to be able to click and then click again straight away and do a double jump, double jump if you want to. Um, with this the timing isn't going to be precise enough so we need to change it to a get key down but like I said before fix update is only called so often and get key down is also only called once a frame I mean only on the frame that the button is clicked so if you click the space button all of this will only happen for one frame um, but because this is only called on certain frames obviously if you click this on an off frame it's not going to happen so that's a problem and then you would think we'll just move this up here then but then the other problem is that you need to have your rigid body um, being manipulated in the fixed update so to get around that we are just going to move this out and we're going to move it into our update but then in a second we're going to move this line back down to here and to do that we're just going to need some more if statements so we're going to need if jump1 <coughs> is equal to true and if jump2 is equal to true and then down here we're just going to want to put this line so we'll cut it from there and just paste it down here and then down here we're also going to want to set these back to false just so that you're not jumping after you jump you don't just go into the air forever so equals false and jump to equals false equals not minus cool uh, so now we have that part set up, we still need to set up this. So up here we want to just copy this and paste it below it. Um, but then we're going to need to make a few changes in here. Um, currently this is going to be running at the same time because they're exactly the same thing. We only want this one to run after this one. And this one only runs if is falling equals false and then it makes is falling equal true. So we'll make this one only run when this polling equals true. And that way it can only run after this one has. And then we also want to add an extra if on it, which will be if can jump is equal to true. And then up here we want to set can jump equal to true. And we also want to set up here jump one equal to true. And down here we just want to set jump two equal to true. And we want to set instead of setting is falling to false, we want to set can double jump, I mean instead of changing it to true, we want to set can double jump to false. And then we also just need to quickly come down to where we're setting our um, is falling to false. And we just want to set our can double jump to false as well. Um, so this all should be working. We'll just check if it is, and if it is, I'll just run you through it all quickly. Wait for it to load. Press play. Jump once. It's all good. Jump twice. And we can't jump more than twice. We only have the two jumps. Cool. So um, now we have double jumps. We might just also add something to make them a little bit more worthwhile. So we'll just come over to this block. 
and delete it center. Come down the red one, control D to copy it. Um, control and click up to, I mean drag up to uh, to move it on the grid. And just move that one up and hit apply. And now if we press play again, we'll have something to actually jump over. So, press play. And yeah, we have something to jump over. And then I landed in something on the other side. But yeah, so we have a double jump in. So let's come back over to the code for a second. And yeah, so it's pretty simple. We just added the balls to do all of our checks and set them all to false at the start so that you weren't jumping. And then we shuffled around a few things. Uh, we moved, we changed from the rigid body to move our character. We translate just so it would be at a constant speed. And we also made it so our if statements were up in our normal um, update just so that we can use the get key down because we can't use it inside of the fix update. And then that's why we have our if statements which we just set true. Instead of running this stuff in here, we run it in here whenever we set it to true. Which is just another way of doing that. Um, so yeah, that's our double jump. The first jump happens and then the second one can only happen if the first one's happened. And yeah, pretty simple. Um, hope you enjoyed the video and yeah if you did like comment and subscribe and I'll see you next time thanks for watching